apartment brings back so many memories. They're good memories. Most of them are. So much has happened since I used to come here with you all the time. It's almost like stepping into a time machine and, and being taken back into the past. Yeah, it's kind of a dusty time machine, though. I'm still not much of a housekeeper, you know, while Brian's always busy. It looks fine to me. Listen, I spoke with Lee, and he said that I could use his car, so that's all taken care of. Well, that was nice of him. Yeah, and your mother said it was fine, too, as long as I have you back before your curfew. Did she really? Yeah. That's wonderful. I wasn't sure how she'd take it. No, no, she was fine about it. So I'm going to call up there tomorrow and make an early dinner reservation for like about 5 or 5.30. So I, I think you ought to skip lunch. So you have a nice appetite. You know, I feel even more like a child than ever with all these restrictions on everything I do. If you ask me, Judge Stallman made them as difficult as he possibly could so that I just have to break them and he could send me away. Hey, come on, Laura. Now, that is no way to talk. The truth. No, it's not. It's not even close to the truth. Laura, you're going to have to start trusting people again. Now, I know it's been tough for you, but you can't go around thinking that, that the whole world is against you with some chip on your shoulder. I can't, huh? Well, you can, but it's, it's crazy. It's just going to make you more unhappy. Most people are, are basically good. Most of you can trust. Will you give it a try? It'd be a lot easier if more people were like you. Thanks. All right. What's all this about the lodge of the link? I want you to call and make a room reservation. Make it in the name of Scotty Baldwin. They gonna use it? Nope. I don't get it. You don't have to get it. Just do what I'm telling you to do. Didn't you used to work in the summers as a garage mechanic? Yeah, three long years. I thought so. That's going to come in very handy for what I have in mind. You said you wanted to see me about some message or something? Yes, a message I never received. One that you took. Jeff, that's impossible, honest. Bobby, I wouldn't make such a big thing out of it, but the message was very important to me. Now, I left very definite orders with you that if I ever got a call from a Mr. Cal Jameson, you were to notify me immediately. Do you remember that? Yes. All right, I... well, evidently, Mr. Jameson tried calling me from Buffalo just before Thanksgiving. Yes, he did. I remember. All right, and the operator left a callback number. I remember that, too. All right, well, I never got the message or the number. Well, Jeff, I don't understand what happened, because I write those down the minute they come in, and I always put them right in the stack of messages. Right. Operator 6, Buffalo, right? It was Heather. Heather? Yeah, Heather was standing right here talking to her mother, and when the message came through, she heard me take the message for you, and... Go on. Well, that's it. Heather heard me take the message, and she said that she would give it to you. Didn't you get it? No, I did not. You never stop, do you, Cal? Stop what? Looking for the magic formula. How to get rich. You gotta keep working at it. That's the only way. Yeah, just like your brother. You know, for long as I've known you, you've always been looking to find a get-rich scheme. Harvey was no different. And... We know how that ends. Why don't you give it up before it's too late? Before it's too late for what? You know what I mean. There's a bottom line to everything. Look, why don't you just stop right now? Get yourself an honest job. <laughs> an honest job? Tell me, you know what an honest job is? It means working in a factory, having some guy stand over you and tell you what to do all day. Well, it's not for me. Why do you have to bring something like this up now? Because I'm worried about you. You're so nervous, always going through that little book, always on the telephone. I know that I've caused a lot of trouble around here lately. That doesn't matter. Well, I mean the food, the, 
the, the, the rent, the, the phone bill. The None of it would matter. It's, it's just that I have so very little of my own. You do know that, don't you, Cal? Yes, I do know that, Thelma, and I'm going to pay you for it. I'm going to make it up to you. i got a plan, and everything's going to be changed. It's going to get better. Such familiar words. They could be Harvey standing right there saying them to me. I think you understand something, Thelma. Your knee thing's got to get better. Because they can't get any worse. Cal. Yes. You know that I have never pried into your personal affairs. But I do know that you did not come up here to stay with me out of choice. No, I didn't. And you're afraid. Yes. I can tell. I learned from watching your brother. So jumpy. Always peering out of windows, tightening up whenever somebody comes to the front door. That's no way for a man to live. And it's no way that I want to live either, Thelma. But this time it's going to be different. Don't you see? I got a plan. Things are going to change. Cal, I have to ask you for the money you owe me. You know, I wouldn't. It's just I have all these bills piling up on me. Listen, I understand. Okay, Bill? I understand. I, I had a big deal that just didn't quite come through, but, but there's another one. It's a smaller one. It won't bring up as much money in, but it, it'll be a beginning. It sounds so familiar. Thelma? I want to make a person-to-person -person call to uh, Port Charles, New York. Person-to-person -to, -person to Miss Bobby Spencer. Area code 315. Four, Miss Spencer, who's calling? Yeah, it's Cal Jameson, operator. That's my party on the line. How you doing there, Bobby? What do you want? You weren't very friendly the other night when I sent you the note over the, to your table at the restaurant. I'm sorry, but I'm on duty right now, and I am very busy. Well, does that mean that someone's there and that you can't talk? Yes. Well, that's no problem. Because I don't want you to talk. I just want you to listen. Look, I don't have much time, really. Relax. It won't take long. Now, obviously, you don't want to be reminded of your cousin Lorraine or the time you spent Jackson. I am sorry, but you're still wrong about that. I am not wrong, Bobby. In fact, I can get proof that everything I remember about you is right on the notes. Now, you wouldn't want me to have to do that, would you? I have nothing more to say. I suppose that means the answer is no. You mean to tell me you'd like me to expose your secret? Well, I won't. I'll gladly keep it for a small fee. Look, I'm sorry, but I have to get back to work now, and I really mean it. Well, I just think perhaps we better talk at another time when you don't have to worry about who's listening. Now, what's your home number? I tried to find it in information, Fort Charles information there, but you're not listening. And, uh, Bobby. Yes? Don't try giving me the wrong number. Because I really don't like wasting time and money to find someone who's double-crossed me. See, if you tried that, I'd get very mad, and then I'd have to call the hospital executives and tell them what I know about you and the time you spent with your cousin Lorraine in Jacksonville. Now, what's the number? Um, it's 555. Five five five. Three one two eight. Three one two eight. And what time do you get off for? Around six today. Fine. Right. You'll be here immediately. What are you staring at? You. You look scared to death. Chris, you're imagining things. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. You look scared to death. That's why I'm waiting here to see if I can help. Thanks, Chris, but I don't need any help. There was just somebody that wanted to talk to me. Somebody that I didn't want to talk to while I was on duty, and they will get me a Jesse's later. Oh. Listen, terrific news. How bad? No, really, really terrific. I got tickets to the opening of that road show musical. Opening night from one of the patients. What do you say? You and I go and make a big night of it. Oh, thanks, Chris, but I'm sorry I can't. Big plans, eh? Yeah. You might say that. 
Well, I am very disappointed, but I'll let you make it up to me if you'll have dinner with me tonight. Sorry again, Chris, but I really can't. I've got a lot of stuff to take care of at home, and I've got to wait for that call to come through. You're going to let that stop you? You didn't sound very eager to talk to whoever that was anyway. Yes, but I've got to. Fine. I think I've ever been more surprised already to talk to Mark and Katie in London was surprise enough. And then when they invited me to stay with them. And you are going, of course. Yes, I hope so. If the travel arrangements can be worked on. A couple of days in London would be lovely. Oh, I'm so delighted for you. Oh, I hope Jesse can arrange it or rearrange it so that it works for you. Oh, well, I have some leave coming up, so that's no problem at all. Jesse says that I can go next week. I'm going to spend a couple of days with Mark and Katie, and then I'll have time to see my family, too. Well, wouldn't it be more special if you waited until the Christmas holidays? Oh, no, not really. Besides, it's awfully hard to get reservations at that time. And also, Mark and Katie are still hoping to spend Christmas here if they possibly can. Oh. And as a matter of fact, I am too. And there are those who would miss you if you weren't here for the holidays. Howard Lansing, for instance. Oh, Audrey. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hello. I can't help you. Hello, Anne. For one Hello. more? <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah. Exhausted? Oh, not at all, no. How are you, Dory? Oh, just fine, thank you, Anne. Oh, good. Have you been answering my students' questions all this time? Uh-huh. Oh, dear. No, can you believe it? Well, <laughs> what were the questions about, Anne? Well, mostly about Africa and the work I did at this small field hospital run by missionaries. Oh, where were you in Africa, Anne? Nigeria. It must have been an incredible experience. Oh, it was, in, in many ways. It's amazing how many people in this world don't realize how much the place needs help medicine, and just knowing that somebody cares what really happens to them, you know. Some of the natives I work with, especially the children, didn't even know what a doctor or nurse was. The ladies? Private conversation oh, here? Yeah, no, no, certainly isn't. Get back here and join us. Okay. Annie, it's good to see you. It's good to see you too, Jeff. Audrey and Steve told me all about your latest brush with this Jameson guy. Yeah, yeah, near miss. Or what one might call uh, the latest in a series of near misses. Mm, I'm sorry to look out for you. Any chance you'll connect soon? Uh, it's entirely up to him. He's calling the shots, and I just have to play the waiting game. Hmm. How's Heather enjoying the work, Mrs. Taylor? She, uh, she's enjoying it a lot. She doesn't consider it work, however. Dr. Weber, Dr. Jack Weber, before your eyes see There we go. Ladies, thank you for a very stimulating conversation. For a little breeze. Yeah. I'm afraid that's all I have time for these days. Bye. Oh, poor Jeff. Why poor? Well, it's just that, well, he looks so frustrated and expectant all at the same time. Mm, I know. It's not that I don't understand what he's going through. It's just that I wish there was something we could do to reassure him. I think it'd be very hard to do that. No, he is so fired up by the thought that his son is still alive, and yet he doesn't know where to turn next to find him. I don't envy him the frustration. Oh, but just imagine how thrilling it would be if he does find his son after all this time. I mean, it would change his whole life, and Heather's too. Mm -hmm. 